Jean-Marie Gehenno is the president and CEO of the International Crisis Group and is a former United Nations Undersecretary General for Peacekeeping Operations. Jean-Marie, on this International Peace Day, where the aspirations and rhetoric of the international community are aimed at forestalling conflict and sustaining peace, we find ourselves alarmed instead by the persistence of war and its devastating humanitarian consequences like the growing flow of refugees and migrants in much of the world. Is it possible to focus our peacemaking concern on prevention of conflict when we were obliged to be continually addressing conflicts after they have broken out? Well, at Crisis Group, we believe it's not only possible, it's absolutely necessary. Because what we see is that conflicts are much harder to end today than they were 20 years ago, because the agendas have become much more transnational, much more complicated, the actors multiple. And so once this conflict starts, you really don't know when it ends. And so you ha you sometimes it takes a generation to repair a country. So the whole effort should be in prevention. And, uh, and in my organization, the Crisis Group, we focus a lot on those situations which have not yet real conflict, but which could break into conflict. And I think the, the world is in crisis mode at the moment. And the attention of the leaders is really uh, distracted by the necessity to deal with the crisis of the moment. And as they do that, you see more and more new crises, less and less time to address them. And so it's a kind of vicious spiral of conflict that we see developing if prevention doesn't become the priority. Uh, in the current crisis in Syria, it is angst over the effects on Europe that has generated much of the interest in the West. But the greater burden, isn't it, is on the adjacent states, the states of transit, states of resettlement. What should the international community be doing to balance those priorities? Well, I think we still uh, live, especially in the developed countries, in Europe, in the United States, with the uh, illusion that we can be islands of tranquility and peace, an ocean of turmoil. So the refugees, we just want to keep them out, essentially. And by doing that, by, focus, by pushing them to countries like Lebanon, where you have uh, uh, Lebanon, a country of four million, a uh, little more than four million people. You have one million and a half uh, refugees. Uh, by doing that, we're going to create a crisis when there's already a crisis in Lebanon. But it's actually a miracle that Lebanon at the moment survives that influx of refugees. Uh, the refugees, if, they, if we push them to the countries uh, immediately adjacent without sharing the burden and without addressing the cause, that is the conflict, we're going to destabilize more countries. And so we believe uh, very strongly that the focus on those countries that are seen just as buffers uh, is very dangerous. Having a, a refugee policy that is just a buffer policy will not work. When you were here at the International Peace Institute 14 months ago, talking about your memoir, The Fog of Peace, you observed that the UN was, quote, very risk averse, unquote, that it would be, quote, much better for the UN to take risks. As we await the naming shortly of the person who will become the next UN Secretary General, is that what she or he ought to be thinking about in taking over leadership of this institution? That's an essential quality because at a time when business as usual will not work, you need a Secretary General who can really take initiative. We see a steady deterioration of the relations between major powers, which means that conflicts which are often locally generated are then made worse by the global dynamics between Russia, the United States, China, that is a very dangerous situation to be in. So I would want the next Secretary General to be very proactive in that domain. And that means indeed taking some risk, being willing sometimes to speak truth to power. And of course it's always a, a very narrow path to tread because the Secretary General has no power. If he antagonizes the major powers, he can't do anything. But if he just uh, um, is weak in front of them, is, is useless. And so finding that narrow path where you are prepared sometimes to challenge the powers to be and at the same time not break their relations with them, that is, the, that is really the, uh, what we expect from the next Secretary General.
Uh, Jean-Marie, thank you very much for speaking to the Global Observatory. Thank you.